it's Kim here and welcome to another edition of Ask Kim, the series where you guys ask me questions and I answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, I've still got a little bit of a cold as you can hear so I'm a bit eh, uh, so please excuse that. But without further ado, let's go to the first question. Blue Wizard asks, if you had the time and money, would you come to Australia? So it's not just Blue Wizard who's been asking about Australia, there's been a whole bunch of you asking whether or not I'd come to Australia and um, one person asked if I'd come to New Zealand. Um, so I don't know if there's some kind of Australian New Zealand revolution going on right now to try and get me to come to your country. Um, the answer is I've been to Australia before, because a couple have asked that as well. Uh, I went to Brisbane and the Gold Coast because I had um, a couple of friends living over there. So um, when I was over in Malaysia, I jumped over to um, Brisbane and the Gold Coast and had a look around, uh, went back, uh, went to the outback and uh, went to a ranch, met some koalas, met some kangaroos, all that kind of thing and absolutely loved it. I love the country, I love the culture, um, I love the mix of ethnicities and races and yes I would absolutely love to go back because um, you know Brisbane, Gold Coast, it's not that much of Australia, there's so much more of Australia to go and see and I would love to go and see New Zealand as well. Um, so yeah, I would absolutely love to come back. The, the problem really is uh, time, because uh, from UK I think it takes about 24 hours to fly over there or something ridiculous like that. And money, it's it's quite expensive. And in some ways the problem with having a Malaysian family that I don't see that often is that when I have the money and the time, my priority is to fly home to Malaysia. So quite often it is rare that I do see that side of the world. Southeast Asia, Asia and um, Australia because yeah my priority is to go home and see my family um, so this year I am actually going to go home to Penang um, in August so maybe next year um, you know I'll tick over and uh, go to Australia instead or do what I did um, you know ages ago and go to Malaysia and then um, halfway through my stay go over to Australia because the journey is a little bit shorter not greatly shorter because Australia is a big country. Um, but yeah, absolutely would love to come over to Australia and New Zealand. Mash Games asks, as I get the impression that you're a huge comic book fan, I was just wondering what you would recommend as a good starting place for someone new to comics. I've had a look online, but the guides just seem to end up going around in circles. So comic books are pretty complicated, they're a very tough world to get into. And I must admit, um, when I first started getting into comic books, um, you know, it was actually quite recently, like probably only in the last couple of years. And I had the same kind of, oh God, I don't know where to start. You know, what storyline, what arc is this? Because comic books are always reinventing themselves, always beginning, always ending. Superheroes are always dying, passing the mantle on, being replaced, you know. Um, so it is a tough one to kind of know where to start. My advice is, is to maybe just kind of pick a superhero that you quite like, that seems to suit what you like. Um, and then just dive in, just go into a comic book shop, um, well Waterstones actually has really good um, comic book range at the moment, um, and just take a look, you know, take a few off the shelf, flick through, see what takes you fancy, and just go for it that way, because honestly that's what I did, um, I, I gave up on online guides, because if you try and go through them you just really end up going round and round in circles. One app that I like is I use Comixology on my iPad. It used to be a lot better when it was when you could buy in-app uh, comic books in-app because it was really easy to see the story arc. But one thing that's really good about it is when you read a comic book on that app and get to the end, it will say what's next in that lore, what's next in that cycle or what's before, what what is like what the storyline before that was. So it is kind of like a good way to point you towards if you want to read more, you know, and obviously if you didn't like the story arc, well you can go pick something else. Um, I mean right now I'm really enjoying Fear Itself which is um, an Avengers storyline involving um, Thor, primarily Thor, um, Cap America, Iron Man, all the usual Avengers and stuff like that. I'm absolutely in love with Captain Marvel um, with Carol Danvers um, which is over there somewhere um, which is I think part of the new 52? Um, yeah and I can't wait because there, there's going to be a new um, Captain Marvel collection. I think I can't remember the word. Like, I'm, it, people are going to shout. Comic book purists are going to shout at me. But yeah, there's a new one where she kind of sets up a group of superheroes. That's out coming, um, incoming, and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, you know, Batman, anything like that. Honestly, just go in the store flick through, see which one you like, and pick it up from there, and then just do your research. If you enjoyed that storyline, if you want to know a little something, you know, you can go back and forward. Um, 
I think the one thing is, you know, you might spoil little things for yourselves, like connections between people, or what time zone it is, like, especially with Batman, because there's so many kind of, I'm not going to say, but iterations of Batman, and things involving Robin, and various versions of Robin. But I think, if you just go into it with a kind of open mind, and yeah, just just dive in, honestly, that's my recommendation. Just dive in, get stuck in there, and um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Rorasaur22 asks, what was your first experience with getting drunk? Yeah, so I get a lot of questions, because I, I mentioned, you know, in several videos that I don't drink alcohol at the moment. Um, and if I'm honest, I can't remember the first time I got drunk. Um, it was probably when I was a teenager, one teenage party with my friends and stuff like that, and we were all naughty and underage, and we managed to buy a bottle of vodka and things like that. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't really remember the first time I got drunk, I'm afraid to say. Um, I, I used to drink quite a lot, you know, going through uni, and then, you know, being a journalist. Um, I don't know what it is, but journalists really do live up to that stereotype of being drunken old hacks. And I get a lot of questions about why I don't drink anymore. And um, I kind of mentioned it in Cornerstone, I think, but I was distracted by playing Minecraft, so I probably didn't explain it very well. Um, basically, I just, I'm not very good at drinking. Um, I guess because of my size and my Asian genes, I'm not very um, capable of drinking. I have quite a bad reaction to alcohol, um, where I, I, I get drunk very easily, like within two glasses of wine, three glasses of wine, I'm off. And I get the Asian glow, you know, where you go all red uh, and you look flushed um, and your eyes go a bit red, um, which is hilarious. It, you know, it entertains my Western friends no end. Um, but I, I guess I stopped, I think, three years ago because it was getting to a point where I was drinking a bit too much. Um, and you know during school days and stuff like that not not during the day but in the evening and you know I was going to work hungover on a Wednesday which is quite frankly one of the most depressing experiences on God's earth and I was wasting a lot of time at the weekend because I'd go to the pub on a Friday night and then get drunk and ruin my weekend you know because Saturday I'd just be hungover and for me I d again I don't know if it's because I'm intolerant in some way if I have an allergic reaction or if it's just me being small and incapable of processing alcohol um, but a hangover for me isn't just like you know an English person's hangover where they're a bit headachey and they need some bacon and then everything's fine an hour later for me a hangover no matter how much or how little I drink is always full-on throwing up migraine nausea just ugh. So I kind of just got to this point where I was like, I'm really sick of putting my body through this. I'm really tired of spending Saturday just hunched over my toilet, um, you know, just wasting my life. So I thought, you know what, screw it. I'm just, I'm done. Like, I I don't know. I don't really, I don't really see the need for alcohol, you know, and that's my personal decision. I know, you know, people enjoy drinking and it kind of um, adds to an experience or adds to their enjoyment of something like watching sports matches and stuff like that but for me I just don't feel that I need it anymore like you know going to a barbecue at a friend's house I don't really need booze anymore um, you know I, I do quite fine with a glass of water to be honest um, and I don't know if that's my Asian side my Southeast Asian side coming coming through because in Malaysia we don't really drink that much and when I go out with my friends and my family we don't really drink we well our main focus is food as any Malaysian will tell you but instead of kind of in the UK it's like do you want to go to the pub but in Malaysia it's do you want to go for a coffee like do you want to go to the coffee shop or do you want to go makan which is to eat you know um or do you, you know or for a bubble tea or something like that it's never like do you want to go to the pub so I find that quite a cultural difference um quite a cultural shift um you know it's probably the only thing really that sticks out to me about the kind of eats meets east meets west experience um, but yeah, my friend's pretty cool with me not drinking. I don't really get peer pressure about it. You know, a couple of jokes here and there. But yeah, I don't. I honestly don't miss drinking. If there's one thing I do miss, it's um, Japanese whiskey and um, Scottish whiskey because I, I love drinking neat whiskey. Um, the older the better because it's just so smooth. Um, so if there is one thing I do miss, it's that. But in all honesty, I, I, I just really don't miss it at all, which is crazy considering how much I used to drink. Um, yeah.
Melly Nian asks, what are your five favorite games to play when you are with friends or not recording? At the moment, I'm playing a lot of Heroes of the Storm. I'm not very good at it. You know, I mean, you saw my MOBA experience with um, Pyrian, including being told off for calling it a MOBA. Um, but I, I really like Heroes of the Storm. I find it a lot more uh, intuitive. Like, I, I understand it a lot more. Um, so, and I, I think I find it a bit more interesting with the kind of little side quests and stuff like that and the way the map works. Um, so I'm playing that a lot with, um, especially with my friend Martin, who joined us on the Nosgoth live stream. Um, so yeah, we, we, we have a lot of fun playing that. Duncan sometimes joins us as well. Um, I play a lot of Bloodborne, except I suck at it. Like, I'm really bad at it. I'm no good at it at all, but there's something about it that I just can't put it down. I love the kind of Lovecraftian world. I love the old school gameplay of, you know, one death and that's it. You've lost everything and you're back to the start. I love the um, the way it doesn't hold your hand, the way it encourages you to explore and discover things for yourself. Um, yeah, so really enjoying that. I'm also playing um, Fire Emblem Awakening on my 3DS. Because um, it was just one of those games where I absolutely loved it, got halfway through and then stopped for some reason. Um, so especially because um, I was on holiday in Spain recently, uh, I just sat down and played it again and I was just hooked again. So I'm determined to play that and finish it this time. Um, when friends come over, we play a lot of Mario Kart um, and Mario Party as well. Um, so yeah, playing that a lot when, when friends come over and when family come over. Um, you know, it's just one of those games, it's really easy. Turn it on, jump in, jump out. You know, it's, it's really fun. And, you know, I do moderate my language when I'm with my friends and family. Uh, and I'm also playing number five, uh, The Witcher, uh, which I'm absolutely loving as well. Um, I started reading the books because it's based on a book written by a Polish author, I think in 1983, and he's written a whole series of um, Witcher books. Um, so that's what the game's based on. So I really am enjoying the books and playing the game as well, which has done a pretty decent job of bringing to life um, the, the book. Um, so yeah, just really enjoying that. So, cool guy 5132 you've got two questions, and I want to answer both, so we'll do this in two parts. I've noticed you've been working from home a lot lately. Does something happen in the office, or is it just hard to get there some days? Maybe you prefer working alone? So yeah, no drama about this. Um, it's just that I finally kind of got a good home setup. And one of the problems is, is I live about, uh, on a good day, a half an hour, 45 minute drive outside of Bristol. Um, but on a bad day, and there's been quite a few bad days recently because of roadworks, and I don't even know what like loads more traffic accidents and stuff like that it quite often takes me an hour an hour and a half to drive in and then drive home again which has just been getting a bit like oh you know um, and it's quite difficult because I live on my own so I'll get home late and you know not have any time to cook or any energy to cook and then because I spend all my time traveling around I'm not you know buying food to cook and it's just getting a bit depressing so I decided to um, spend a couple of days working from home um, especially when it's doing single player stuff like Life is Strange um, and things like that. It is just easier to do at home because it's quiet, you know, I've got my Gengar back there and um, I can cook myself some proper meals and I don't have to spend up to three hours driving around every day, you know, I can get so much more done. Um, I do miss being in the, op uh, in the office, so one thing I am doing, I'm in the process of trying to move to Bristol but it's a little bit more complicated for me because I have to sell my current property find a new property, do all that kind of exchange of contract nonsense and stuff like that, and working out finances and things like that, so it, it, it's taking a while to get that off the ground, but I'm hoping to move to Bristol soon so I can be in the office a lot more um, and yeah, and just get things done as well. And as you can hear with me being sick as well, I don't want to be driving around for three hours a day when I'm like, you know, bleh. Um, so yeah. It's no, absolutely no drama at all, um, you know, I want to be in the office, it's a lot more fun in the office, I, I prefer being around people, um, you know, and you just get a little bit more done, you know, you just, some of your craziest ideas you just get from just sitting around, you know, just chatting rubbish, and you know, I, I miss that, so I am working on it, I should be in the office a lot more soon, um, but even then, I think even if I was in the office, um, I'd probably still record single player stuff at home, um, yeah, um, so that's the first part of your question. Second part, with your parents soon to be staying with you, do you think it'll be harder to work from home? Will we ever get to meet them? So for those of you who don't know, my parents are soon going to be moving in with me. Um, so we've uh, had this weird situation where they've sold their property but not found anywhere to move to, 
so we said well why don't you move in with me and then I'm possibly going to move somewhere and then also it means as well like mum's been a bit worried about me you know not eating properly not sleeping properly that kind of thing so bless her I think she's quite looking forward to um making sure I've got a hot dinner waiting for me and um you know my pants have been washed and that kind of thing so I, I I'm, I'm quite enjoying that because my family and I have spent a lot of time you know living in different countries together apart away you know and um you know I kind of miss being near to them um because currently they either live in they split their time between Malaysia or um down south on the south coast of England so it's not easy to go and see them um, so I'm really looking forward to them moving and we're probably gonna kill each other within a week though because my mum and I are quite feisty quite stubborn with each other um, as for if we're going uh, if it's gonna be harder to work from home I have told my parents you guys you gotta be quiet when I record from home or you get out um, so I don't, I don't know how it's well, I don't think it would be harder to work from home if anything it'll be funnier because can you imagine like recording something and mum just wanders in and just I don't know asks what this is and what that is it would be hilarious I was thinking about doing a couple of videos with my mum because she is quite an experience in herself um, but I'll ask her if she wants to be on camera. Dad doesn't want to be on camera, which is cool. Um, you know, he prefers to bumble around in the background. Um, but I'll ask my mum. I mean, that's the thing is like whether or not they want to be kind of exposed to all of this. Um, I was thinking of doing maybe an Ask Kim with mum, but Ask mum's, Kim's mum. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. Maybe, maybe we'll do a couple of, um, videos together. We'll see. It could be funny. From Bender124, do you have a plush Totoro? Because if not, I will personally send you one from my childhood. Wow, um, that's quite a generous offer. Uh, please don't send me your personal childhood Totoro. Also, that's quite a revelation for me that like you have a childhood Totoro. Like, am I just getting old or something like that? Like, when I have childhood toys, they're just generic teddy bears and stuff like that. Because even like Pokemon wasn't around when I was a kid and stuff like that. But anyway, to answer your question, I have a lot of plushy Totoros. Here's one. Here's another, here's another, uh, here's something a little bit different, there's actually a, a gem Totoro made out of quartz in here, uh, I haven't unwrapped the package but I found this in um, a toy store in Japan when I went last time and um, I brought a couple of these back to give out as presents to friends but it's a little package and in there is a little quartz Totoro, um, I also have a soot sprite as well and I also have, uh, is, oh, uh, Kirby, just ruining things, hold on. I also have a Kirby who's eaten a Totoro, uh, like that, and this guy here. So uh, as you can see, I am drowning in Totoros. They are sort of taking over my house, so please don't send me any more. Um, so this is my little Totoro family. There we go. So I've got, I've got lots of Totoros, thank you very much. Uh, I absolutely love Totoro. And I think he's one of the best cartoon characters in the world. Actually, I've got a really funny story about this one. I bought this one the second time I went out to Japan on business. And I remember uh, I put him in my backpack, uh, that one hanging over the wall there underneath Gengar. And so I, I took him home in hand luggage. And I was waiting in the hotel for everyone to gather up so we could go to the airport. And there was this old Japanese guy sat opposite me. and. Um, he was kind of waiting for his friends as well and I went into my backpack to try and get something out and so in the top of the backpack you know Totoro's ears and his head popped out and this old Japanese guy was just looking at me and then he just went Totoro desu ka? and he was so like amused that there was this giant Totoro just popping him out from my backpack um, and he was so tickled by it and we had a kind of broken English broken Japanese conversation he said he felt sorry that Totoro was squashed into my bag and I was like oh but he's well loved so thank you very much for your questions today I will ask for more uh, when I do the next video and maybe I'll do the ask Kim's mum one because I think they're moving in soon I don't really know what the final plan is um, so yeah keep your eyes on my subreddit and my Twitters for that uh, if you like this video please hit like and subscribe I'm trying desperately to get up to 750 subs seven well it's not 750 750 thousand subs because I'd love to do a milestone video I've got some crazy ideas for it so let's try and get up there anyway thanks for joining me this time guys See you next time. Bye!